your orchestration is making everything being connected and in harmony. You're making an environment in harmony, right? You're orchestrating. You're able to command many moving things in a simple way. So that's the whole idea of drone orchestration. They're making sure that you're connecting all those parts and make it easy. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 377. What's the best way to bring harmony to your managed drone program? One company offers an option. Ed Bocus is founder and CEO of Vodix, an American robotics company pioneering in an enterprise software platform for orchestration, operation, and automation of drones and robots. The platform addresses and solves drone program challenges such as productivity, safety, and governance. Vodix is a powerful and complete cloud-based software-as-a-service solution designed to support all drone manufacturers automating drone-based workflows. The solution is flexible and easy to use, reduces process time, optimizes resources, and minimizes risk for a wide range of applications. Ed is a technology entrepreneur and investor with more than 20 years' experience in creating and leading innovative companies. He started his entrepreneurial career in the year 2000 as the founder and CEO of Cypher, a global leader in the cybersecurity industry with operations in 15 countries. Ed led two rounds of multi-million dollar private equity investments, and as the majority stakeholder, sold the company to Prosegur, a $5 billion European publicly traded company and leader in the private security industry. Ed is also the founder and chairman of BlockBit, a next-generation cloud and network security technology company with over 3,000 active corporate clients and more than 1 million users with presence in 10 countries. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Ed talks about Vodix, the concept of drone orchestration, and how Vodix is helping companies more effortlessly manage, stream, and fly their drones. But before we hear from Ed, I want to thank those of you who are supporting my funding campaign by joining the community of Drone Radio Show Advocates. For as little as $3 per month, you can help defray the cost of production and keep the podcast going and growing. You'll also be able to talk about current shows, bounce around ideas for future episodes, suggest questions of upcoming guests, and gain access to exclusive content. To become a Drone Radio Show advocate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. If you like, you can also make a one-time donation in any amount at droneradioshow.com slash donate. And by the way, If you have a great story on the use of drones that you'd like to share in a podcast, contact me at randy at droneradioshow.com. So let's learn how drone orchestration can help companies manage their drone programs with Ed Bocas of Vodix. Let's pick up the interview where I ask Ed to introduce himself. So hi, I'm Ed Bocas. I'm the founder and CEO of Vodix. Ed, what is Vodix? So Vortex is what we call, a, we are an orchestration platform, right? So we do drone orchestration. We created that concept, which is pretty much connecting all the moving parts of a drone program. So we have a vision to be able to, one single panel, you control all your drone program, connecting all these moving parts of this ecosystem, right? From corporate systems to flight system, including like UTM, uh, DAA system, the detection avoidance, UTM, traffic measure systems and all this and make it easy for you to operate and automate. So you can automate the connection between all this ecosystem, but also automate flights, missions, mission creation, increase your visual capabilities and implementing AI into doing better what the drone is able to do, such as precision landing and visual intelligence and all this. So the concept of the orchestration, as I mentioned, 
is the concept of really being able to connect everything because we believe that with our orchestration, there is no automation. How does Vodex differ from other companies that provide a similar service? First of all, we as a vision as well, from the beginning, we are hardware agnostic. So we can work and we work with any drone manufacturer. We work pretty much virtually any drone manufacturer, virtually any, for example, drone in a box solution as well, the, the docking station. Uh, so we are agnostic of what hardware you're using because we believe depending on the application you have, you need a different hardware, right? A model or a different drone manufacturer, right? So being hardware agnostic is good because you don't have to be trained in different platforms. You can have one platform which can manage any drone type you have. So we are drone agnostic. There's a, a huge value for that. We are pioneer in the concept of drone orchestration. So we are pioneer in the concept of, again, as being drone agnostic and being able to really connect the whole ecosystem into a single panel, which is very easy for you to, to operate and feasible to, to automate, right? We have the lowest latency in the market for video streaming and, and command and control. So I'm talking about 0.2 seconds is lower than pretty much everybody, including most of the manufacturers. And, and remember that we are drone agnostic. So the streaming, especially in high definition, we are the best in the market. We are the most comprehensive solution. So we are a complete solution to do everything you need in a drone program from what we call from managing, streaming, and flying your drones. We are modular. So as I mentioned before, we segregate our platform into three products so we can phase in into our platform and cost efficiently as well. So we have one product called Manage that the whole idea is that you can manage your missions, uh, your resources, your data in one place. We have another product called Stream, focus on only streaming uh, real time uh, your flight videos to anyone from anywhere. And then you have the other product called Fly, which allows you to operate and remote operate your drones and integrate in real time with your ecosystem, right? So that's how we, we segregate the three products into model products as well. And cybersecurity is one of the main differentiators as well. I have a 23-year experience in cybersecurity. I've been one of the pioneers in the cybersecurity world in, in the world. I created a cipher in Blockbit and very successful cybersecurity companies. So everything we do is secure in terms of cyber uh, from implementing many high-level cryptography in everything we do, but also cutting processes that can have a human failure. As, as an example, when you have to take an SD card from a, a drone and put into your computer physically and manually, right? That's, you can have a leak of information very easily there. And we do what we call drone to cloud communication, right? Encrypted and authenticated. So cybersecurity is also another uh, differentiator that we have. What types of data or inputs can your system manage and convey? We see data segregated in different ways, all right? You have data coming from logs, right? And we do that. We centralize your log. You're able to import log from many different platforms and, and many different drone manufacturers. So you have the log data, which is important for many reasons, including for compliance, right, and regulation. And then you have data related to the media and the information you generate through your sensors. So LiDAR information or photos and, and videos, and, and we organize that as well. You have the analytics and we treat that and create insights. We create also metadata from the data, helping, of course, to understand the flights and, and creating more value in terms of, of intelligence. We generate data through reports as well, pre-flight reports, post-flight reports, even pre-flight checklists as well. And you have the data related to visual intelligence, right? AI like creating real-time intelligence, which is data, such as, for example, object counting and um, object detection, volume calculation, and all these things that are important for your business. How difficult is the system to use? It's very easy. We are cloud-based software. We can enhance our capabilities using your code, the VXG, which is Vodix Gateway. And normally when we onboard a new client, like it's, it's a couple of hours, so depending, of course, in the client. And, but we have an amazing case of a huge oil and gas company that is using us for BV loss, for huge inspections for a very long pipeline. And it's for BV loss. So he has the Fly product, which is the most complete one, which includes Fly Stream and Manage. And we were able to implement that in the morning. And he was flying BV loss in the afternoon. How long has Vodix been around? We started developing Vodix four years ago. So we have been developing, we flew over like 5,000 missions, more than 2,000 hours to get to the point we are to launch the company. So we developed the company for four years. We put a lot of money on it, a lot of time and effort to create the best platform possible. And we launched 
April, May this year. So, but before that, we we're developing, investing in the platform in the company for the last four years. Where did the idea for Vodex come from? The whole idea came from my partner, Edwin. So the initial idea was to uh, more related to remote operations of drones long ago, believing that that's a future, which of course, uh, in our vision, still the future as well. And then we developed that into becoming a big platform. So when I met him two years and a half ago, I was still uh, the CEO of Cypher and I was helping him understanding how we could move with the project, how I could mentor him in the sense of creating a big company and, and doing the things he needed to do. Because I was still in my contract, I sold the cipher to a big public credit company and I had to stay there for three years. And during this time, I was just coaching him and on how we, he should position the company. And then we, of course, implementing the idea of drone orchestration and the whole automation and, and, and move to that direction. But keeping, of course, the remote operations as a, as a core value that we can offer to the market. So that's how we started there four years ago, adding my partner with Daniel as well. My partner, with they thought about remote operations as being a big must-have for the future of drone operations. And then through that, we develop a whole platform that does orchestration automation and remote operations as well, for sure. So, You mentioned drone orchestration, which I find to be an interesting term. What does it mean? So the whole idea of drone orchestration is making everything being connected and in harmony. You're making an environment in harmony, right? You're orchestrating. You're able to command many moving things in a simple way. So the idea of, and remember, a drone has a whole ecosystem around it. As I mentioned before, you have the corporate systems that control, for example, service management. And that must talk to your process of drone flights to make sure that you're controlling your SLAs with your customers or your internal KPIs or SLAs, right? So you need that connection because otherwise you have to do manual work, which is more expensive and much less accurate. And then uh, to fly a drone, you have to get lens approval in case you don't have a waiver. Next year, you're going to have remote ID, so you're going to have to go through UTM systems to see uh, traffic and get real-time traffic information to see if there's any uh, problem in, in your area. You should have collision avoidance systems right in place, and that's something is, is growing and growing. And imagine you have to look into all these different panels at the same time you're, you're flying. So it's not efficient. If you have everything in one place, you can fly more. You can be more productive. So, and also at the same time, you have to connect to your drone a box solution because you, the best model for you in economical model is to have a drone on site in your client, just there and flying whenever you need or flying recurrent. So you don't have to drive a drone there. You can leave a docking station of the drone on site with your drone. So you recharge your drone automatically. You can fly, you're safe. So you have to also connect to a drone's docking station as well. And at the same time, if you can do that from a, a remote operation center, much better because you can fly many drones at the same time. You can be more productive. You can even create autonomous paths or automated flights and fly multiple drones at the same time, multiplying the time of operator and making more money even for him, right? Because he's producing more. So that's the whole idea of drone orchestration there, making sure that you're connecting all those parts and make it easy. With so much information available these days, how does Vodex manage and display data so the user can understand what is critical at any particular moment? And more important than the information, in our view, is, are the workflows, right? Uh, the whole point is that it's not about giving a lot of information because you still have to process it. And computers are much better at processing information than we are. So it's a matter of, of creating workflows and getting this information to really automate something, right? So let's say uh, you have a collision avoiding system that is preventing a collision, right? And let's say you miss it, the alert coming from the DAE system that you're using, right? Why do you need to look at it? If you can ingest that data, already create predefined use cases and say, okay, if there's a collision avoidance with that parameters, you go to your closest rally point or just stay still or you go or fly lower. Or no, ignore because that alert is not that critical and you keep on moving. So computers are much better on processing than humans are, right? So it's not a matter of just displaying information. What do you do with information? That's what we are so good at. What type of user do you think would get the greatest value out of using Vodix? Honestly, anyone who flies drones is an addressable market for us because as I mentioned, we have managed stream fly manage is a must have in my view for anyone because you have to create emissions, you have to you know 
create or geofencing, you have to create a path and, and you should have a calendar of your flights, right? You should be integrated with weather information, with airspace intelligence, real time. You should be able to see productivity of your drones that you have. You should be able to do, of course, fleet management. Even if you have only one, you have to provision maintenance and, and you also have to control right the missions you did and what kind of media you captured in, in a very simple panel and easy to see and access and segregated by missions. And then you can filter by drone type, by drones you have in your, in your fleet management or by pilots you have, or even yourself. And also you have to do the logging of it, right? For regulation, uh, for compliance reasons and see the telemetry. So for me, the managed part, everybody who's flying should have. It's a must have. And it's an entry-level product we have. It's a very good price point and everybody must have. So everybody should use it. Stream is growing a lot because the need of having a high quality, low latency Stream is becoming mandatory for many applications. And Stream is, for us, one separate product. And then you have the full product, which includes flies, remote operation, BV loss, or even if you don't want to do BV loss, we can help, of course, with a better control and, and operation as well. But in the vision that we have is everybody that's really flying should be using one of our products. What were some of the challenges that you had to overcome in building the company? I think a challenge for a creative mind that we as a company have, right, as the founders, like uh, is prioritizing what is more important now. Of course, managing budget because we invest a lot of money on it, but uh, but you have to be very conscious on it of what you're spending and, and how fast you be able to should be investing on it as well. How to prioritize even marketing dollars and, and sales dollars. So it's all about managing priorities. You want to do everything at once. And I think the ability to manage priorities is, is a big factor of your success. How did you go about designing the system? I mean, how does one start something like this? So we came from the drone industry as well. Uh, I came from cybersecurity, but my two partners, they came from the drone industry and also from the corporate world, understanding demands of a real workflow of, of IT process, right? So we come from the market. From the beginning, we're working with some customers to understand needs and already using the platform on the day-to-day, but not as an off-the-shelf product that is now, but as more like a, as a service and as a technology. What did you learn from your customers? Let's say you're a big company, right? Not even a big company, anyone that wants to use drones to automate their processes to get better what they're doing now for inspections, for surveying, for surveillance, for first responders. And you know, everybody knows that you have a complex operation, right? You have to look into the weather, you have control your flights, you have to generate logs. Sometimes if you want to have more advanced operations, you have to, of course, integrate with any kind of insights from from traffic management. You must have airspace intelligence to see where you can fly. You must also somehow have a collision avoidance in place, right, from a system or some, some kind of control of it. At the same time, you have to fly and just bringing the drone in the truck of a car and, and driving around and using it and, and be able to fly three times a day is not feasible. doesn't generate a good revenue stream. You should multiply the effort. So, so I think there's a lot of pain there, right? A lot of moving parts in a very low productive environment where like a pilot only fly like two, three times a day because he has to drive around with the drone in the back of his car and fly it. So I think that making it easier, being able to automate, be able to increase the productivity is a big pain. And we are solving that. How would you describe today's drone industry? The way I see the drone market is I believe in what IT did like 20 years ago when they really segregated the market in the three main categories of players. So you have hardware manufacturers, you have the software manufacturers, and you have the service providers, right? And I see that drone is still a little bit lost because I see the drone market being like the same as the IT market 15, 20 years ago, still very early stages, not mature at all. And I see that that will end up happening. That's the vision that I have is that you're going to be like we are doing now, the best software provider in the market. You're going to have very good hardware platforms and you're going to have very good service providers. And by having that segregated the overall experience and the overall quality will be higher and people will be able to deliver better results and, and even in a better price point with the better margins, right? So you saw, of course, BlackBerry failing as a, a platform. At the same time, you see Android, 90% of the market being Android only focusing on the operating system of the mobile industry, right? 
So I believe that. I think the only example that really worked because Sony tried to do verticalize a lot of things. They couldn't do it. Even IBM and with not much success. The only good success is Apple, but Apple is, is one off a million, right? And they have a very strong culture. They were able to do that. But still, if you look into the penetration they have in the, in the market for mobile operating system in the world, they have 10 to 15%, right? 85 to 90%, depending on the country, is Android. So which means that the segregation of software with independent harder providers became more powerful for their penetration in the market, right? They have the highest market share by far. What have the last five years taught you about the drone industry? For me, it's very clear that right now is the moment for drones because you had some challenges before, such as regulation, which now is starting to move faster with the waivers of EV laws and already people talking about, hey, let's not work as an exception with waivers and try to create a legislation that allows people to do that. So I think legislation has evolved a lot last five years, which helps a lot. But at the same time, more than that, for me, the major paradox was their connectivity, right? So now, now if you're looking to compare to five years ago, your LTE network, because LTE is more applicable to drones right now than 5G, because 5G is short range. So we don't have a huge coverage, right? By concept, by the way it is. So LTE, you have the best combination of coverage and bandwidth. So you, you compare the LTE coverage from now to five years ago, it's uncomparable. So we have connectivity. You even have now Starlink bringing internet virtually to anywhere in the planet, right? With high quality, low latency. So I think connectivity on the point that evolved a lot five years. And of course, the better life and the range of how much your drone can fly now because of the energy supply with berries or hybrid drones became much better. So you have better energy for drone, right? Better batteries or, or hybrid drones than before. So you solve the energy challenge, you solve the connectivity challenge, you evolve more in regulation and you have all the hardware evolving you have more drone types uh, EV tolls growing a lot. So you have more drone types. So, so see, the hardware came a long way and everything is converging now, right? So I see definitely now is the point where it becomes feasible and start scaling in a faster pace. So far, you had a lot of challenges that you have to overcome. In my view, they, most of them were, were already solved. And then you have a much better environment right now to make the drone much more popular and, and grow the number of applications and the use of it. How long were you involved in the cybersecurity field? So I started in cybersecurity in end of 1999, early 2000. So for 23 years, I was working to December 31st last year in the cybersecurity world, world being one of the pioneers in the market. Yes. How did your experience in the cybersecurity industry meld with the efforts to create Vodax? When I heard about the Vodax project back then, two years ago, the first thing came to my mind was the similarity that I have with my secure operation centers, right? Where I have one center which remotely operates a lot of the sensors for the cyber world, right? So the whole idea of my business from cyber as a, what's called an MSSP, which is managed through service provider, right? And then later MDR, which is managed detection response, was to provide remote services through the SOC, the, the secure operation centers that we have. And we had six in the world to North America, to Europe, and to Latin America, providing services to now like over 25 countries back then, like 15 countries. And so providing to a lot of countries remote services. And the whole idea of orchestration came then, being a pioneer in that market and creating orchestration in the cyber world, now migrating that same concept of orchestration from the cyber world to the drone world, where you have a lot of big data, moving parts, a lot of sensors. They need to have a single panel to work that and make it easier because imagine, in the cyber world, we're ingesting like one billion logs every day, a lot of events coming from hundreds of thousands of sensors at the same time. And we needed to normalize it, create one single panel, which is the orchestration automation part, which we call SOAR in the cyber world, which is secure orchestration automation response. And I brought that whole idea into the drone world. You have more than 20 years experience in the technology field, and I'm sure you've seen a lot. Can you put in perspective where drones fit in? I was one of the pioneers in the cybersecurity world starting in 1999. Just remember, right? Internet became commercial in 95. Even PayPal exists as a PayPal as a brand in, in 2001. The iPhone was launched in 2007. So imagine 2009 to 2000 was very, very early stage. I was able to luckily and be positioned as a first mover and take that advantage as well. But I saw the whole evolution of the market, how it evolved. And I can see drone as a baby, it's just starting now. 
What excites you most about the drone industry? I see a huge potential. I see a lot of applications. I see a lot of ways of doing better compared to the way it's done today. Outside of the drone world, so a lot of people are not using drones as they should be using drones, and they will use drones. And I always make a joke because if you look to any futuristic movie, right, you always see a lot of flying objects, right? A lot of drones, right? In any movie that you see that is pretending to be the future, right? So I think it's the same. So if you're not seeing objects flying around you, that's something wrong there, right? Right now, even for public transportation, we are pretty much going, besides the long range, we're going 2D, right? You're not moving 3D. When you go 3D, you multiply by millions of the routes you can have. And you shortcut, and you do it faster, with it quicker, and in the men, right? So you don't have to put any lives in risk, even if you talk about defense and military, right? So having all this jet fighters putting their lives in risk, you don't have to do that anymore. They can fly by itself, and it's sometimes even autonomously. Remotely, for sure, and sometimes even autonomously. So nobody's in risk, so you save lives, you do it better, you do it cheaper, you do it faster. Ed, you recently attended the Commercial UAV Expo. What did you walk away with from the experience? For us, it was interesting to see, again, how drone box and drone stations are becoming a reality and people are really looking to it, which we help a lot because we do the precision landing. We integrate the drone box, which is agnostic to any other agnostic as well, drone manufacturer. So, so we see drone box solution as something is growing. We see a lot of the drone manufacturers really want a better operating system for their drones and, and coming to us, right? Because... Most of the drone manufacturers with our software becomes much better than they are, even much better than the verticalized solutions. So we see trends in that way. And we see naturally a demand for BV loss and, and that will drive regulation as well. What's next for Vodix? We are growing a lot. So uh, we are an American company. First, we focus on the US market, which we have a huge penetration and a lot of clients and customers. We are growing a lot in other countries, initially by their own demands that are coming to us. And now we're putting more effort to that. So it's, it's growing outside of the U.S. to other regions that we think are good and growing as a company. And just to keep our positions leaders in the market and, and adding value to our customers. And to always having the best technology that we also add more value to our customers as possible. And for my final question, Ed, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? I think U.S., should be pioneers also in the drone and, and the man aviation industry. And I feel like we're missing a good opportunity to move faster than other countries that are moving faster in the terms of regulation as well. So I think the U.S. should move a little bit faster in terms of regulation so we can be leaders not only in spending, but also in generating technology, right? So if you have other countries more advanced in that regulation, they have more means even to develop technologies, even though U.S., we are the pioneers here and we're the best, but to keeping our position the best, we have to be able also to have a regulation that will move us faster as technology does. That's it for episode 377 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Ed Bocas of Vodix. I want to thank Ed for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about Vodix or want to connect with Ed, check out the webpage at vodix.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, please consider supporting the podcast with a small donation. The content is always free, but for as little as a few dollars per month, you can help defray the cost of production. To donate, go to patreon.com slash drone radio show. And if you'd like to make a one-time donation, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Goers. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www dot drone radio show dot com if you're using drone technology for business fun or research and would like to share your experience on the show please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application and don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels